Bienvenidos, worldwide fans of the galaxy far, far away's hottest entertainment with an edge. Jaime and Fuego here. So stoked to welcome you to my namesake program and Fuego Tainment and uh, my first reaction from D23 because, yes, uh, I know they showed footage earlier this year, but we are finally getting the first public trailer for The Mandalorian, the Disney Plus Star Wars live action series, first of its kind. They have tried and failed previously to do a live action Star Wars TV series. A bit of it actually is what turned into the Rogue One film, which I adored. And I love the grittier approach, which this series is hinting at, created and penned by Jon Favreau. There's also going to be a ton of different people directing, including Clone Wars dude Dave Filoni, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, for whatever reason. Reason. Yeah, she's also going to follow in her pappy, Ronnie, uh, you know, little Opie's footsteps who finished the job on Solo, for better or for worse. Think what you want about that. But yeah, I've been doing my Star Wars coverage here leading up to The Rise of Skywalker all year. I have been reviewing the films. I have also been doing kind of a complete canon coverage of supplemental stuff. So I've done some of the prequel comic books like, uh, boy, Obi-Wan. Uh, I have uh, Age of Resistance that is going to be, or excuse me, uh, Age of Republic, which is going to be coming soon, both the heroes and villains. Those uh, collections were put together recently. Master and Apprentice was a great Claudia Gray book that came out earlier this year. Queen Shadow was fascinating. Dooku Jedi Lost was really cool if you're into that particular character as well. So, I mean, yeah, I've been really just jumping back into just complete canon coverage as best I can, and I cannot wait for this series, especially with some of the guest stars that I've heard about. So let's, without further ado, stop my jibba jabbering and get to this trailer. Disney Plus. Yes, I'm assuming the entire series is what is going to be available on November 12th. But um, yes, I guess only time will tell with that. I this, this just went live about like 15 minutes ago. So let's get some headphones. See, I was so excitable, I like didn't even have earbuds in. And now that those have been properly acquired, I am ready to get this rockin'. This takes place after Return of the Jedi, and yet before Force Awakens, so that big, like, 30-ish year chunk of time. Let's see what this is all about. I cannot wait. And the first image of what appears to be Stormtrooper helmets, I am already so, so there. So let's do this shizzle. Oh, on spikes? For real? Damn. Well, that already sets a precedent of uh, anticipated violence right off the bat. I'm all for it. Nice green locales. Not as often what we get. Everything looks slick but gritty. Kind of not as gritty as Rogue One. But oh snap, there's Apollo Creed, sucker! Wearing that Mandalorian armor, but up, oh, okay. Nice. I'm wondering if we're gonna have any dialogue or just lots of imagery. Because the imagery is dope. There's our Pedro Pascal guy, I'm assuming. Yep, this is feeling so Rogue One, which have, was that IG 88, or at least a similar type of droid? Bounty hunting is a complicated profession. Of course it is. <laughs> You're kind of existing in that in-between. You're a wild card. Don't you agree? Mm. No talkie, no talkie. Dang. Alright. Okay, after the stories of Jango and Boba Fett, another warrior emerges in the Star Wars universe. The Mandalorian is set after the fall of the Empire and before the emergence of the First Order. So yeah, this is presumably, and I'm going to run it back now, this is obviously the Empire as we knew it has been destroyed, but yet there is like new formations transpiring. There's, I don't know, it's probably a similar vibe to what we got in Dark Empire, where, and I guess I know there wasn't First Order in Dark Empire, but where it's like, you know, they're not all destroyed, and they're trying to just regroup and figure things out, and, you know, to, to obviously this is so shortly thereafter, they haven't renamed, reformatted as First Order yet, or whatever, but, yeah, we follow the travels of a lone gunfighter in the outer reaches of the galaxy from the authority of the New Republic, so, 
it just has such a Rogue One vibe to it, and Rogue One is honestly even more so than Force Awakens and Last Jedi, which I have very mixed feelings about, But uh, and, and Solo, obviously, too. Rogue One is my favorite thing that they've done since Disney acquired Lucasfilm and started doing this sort of thing. I'm really curious how how episodic it's going to be and how anthological it's going to be because presumably we are following like same character throughout but in in the same regard uh yeah i i think it's maybe going to be encountering of different characters and in different instances throughout maybe one or two episodes per person and i'm like sweaty nerd status in this we just saw somebody else frozen in carbonite just now i kind of thought that's what that was at the at the first viewing, but that's super super dope, and I'm honestly wondering who that character is. I I just have all the questions now, and let I, I'm just gonna move back to the fact that yeah, the the Disney Plus streaming service, which goes live November 12th, Disney stuff plus Pixar stuff plus Marvel plus Star Wars plus Nat Geo, noticeably absent is Fox, and I'm assuming that's because when all of this marketing was initially being put together, they were like. They were like, I don't know, they weren't sure if that deal was going to fall through, if somebody else was going to swoop in and, and purchase. Plus, the word on the street, as we have heard from the Twitter sphere, is that Disney is not too happy with the underperformance of a lot of these Fox properties that they acquired. Stuff like uh, you know, Dark Phoenix and, and various others. They're not happy with New Mutants, and you know, they're in the midst of just kind of figuring out how to fit you know, Fantastic Four and some of those Fox uh, Marvel properties into the MCU, that that whole, the whole Fox thing is a mess in my estimation, and I'm really kind of bummed that it's even it's even transpired in the first place, and because of my beloved Alien and Predator, and you know those intergalactic properties. But as far as this trailer goes, you know it's it's a teaser, obviously. Uh, even though it says official trailer, there's no teaser in uh, in the saying here on the Star Wars YouTube. But yeah, at a minute and 35 seconds, you're. It, we don't get some dialogue until the very end, but it just gives that much darker vibe right from the get-go with those Stormtrooper helmets on the spikes. If that doesn't set a tone, I don't know what the hell else does. Everybody wanted the Boba Fett solo movie. We all know what happened with Josh Trank and how that tank, tank, that rhymes, not intentionally, but I guess it works out well. And so, yeah, we also got some announcements about the Obi-Wan TV series. I mean, there is so much to talk about at D3, uh, excuse me, D23 this weekend. I'm thinking of another Disney property, D3, The Mighty Ducks. Uh, yeah. Anyway, guys, I cannot wait to see The Mandalorian. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment stuff below. If you dig this video, do the like, the share, and the subscribe thing. Uh, I've been doing lots of Star Wars coverage all year thus far. As I mentioned, next up is actually going to be a discussion of the 80s droids and Ewoks Forgotten TV series, uh, animated TV series, which were got for, for forgotten for a reason. But hey, uh, they still need to be at least discussed, if not to be warned about. Uh, there's moments of charm here and there, and most notably, uh, you know, Anthony Daniels and stuff doing the doing the voice work. But not really too much beyond that. So. I have been Jaime in Fuego. You can find me on all social media sectors like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, here on the YouTube Zone in Fuego Tainment. But I also spend my time on the YouTube channel called The Horror Show, where we cover all things spooktacular, trailer reactions, convention coverage, film reviews, TV reviews, comic book reviews, lots of fun stuff of the spooktacular variety. And uh, lastly, every Monday evening, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, I am on the Willis Gredia YouTube channel doing a program called Show Business where we talk about weekend box office, we discuss some news from the past week, and we look ahead to the upcoming weekend and give some predictions about what might be our winners and our losers in that regard. So I have been Fuego, y'all have been awesome, and until the real of Kyle comes around once more hasta luego sin amigos but uh i am hopeful that we get to reconnect sooner rather than later and until then you know the drill may the force be with you